Hey everyone, I'm Charting Man Dan with the Chart Guys. I've been trading cannabis stocks for the last 13 and a half years, and today reminds us of the good old days of 2017, 2018. Just absolutely massive strength out there across both sides of the border. Certainly the higher listed names getting the liquidity, the volume, the attention. We're going to talk about the psychedelic sector, which exploded in unison. It was the kind of day where there's so much going on, it's hard to keep track of things, and that's where having a team to help out certainly is beneficial. And right now, even after hours, these names are pumping a bit more. We'll see if that can carry over into gap up opens. All right, so I wanna talk about a lot of things. We'll see if we can keep this a bit concise right now after hours, as I mentioned, ACB is up 3%, CGC 3%. So we'll see if they can hold those gains into tomorrow morning. The general playbook back in, in the massive run in 2017, 2018 was a strong high volume close. You gap up the next morning, we as traders would sell the gap up open, reload five minute oversold conditions for the hourly higher low and look for continuation. We certainly have back burners on the menu. If you don't know what a back burner is, Google Chart Guys back burner, there's a whole video explaining it, but that is definitely what we're looking at for entries. We're gonna talk about how to make entries when the, the stocks are running away. We don't wanna be chasing and buying the top, but there's ways that we can limit our risk by looking at patterns and looking at key levels to make entries as things are running. We'll also have to acknowledge, I know there's a lot of frustrated fundamental bulls out there. Right now, MSOS is up 3.4% on the day after Florida gets the beneficial news of we're gonna have a vote in November. And then you have names like CGC up 30%, ACB up 44%. I use technical analysis as a full-time trader because I have determined that that is the way that I can make the most money, stay the least biased, and just capitalize on opportunity wherever it comes from. And this is this a scenario where, you know, there's plenty of times fundamentals don't align with what the flashing numbers are doing. And that's the case right now. And again, as I've been saying in all these videos, I'm a full-time trader. I'm telling you, we're just going to go to where the volume and the liquidity is. We don't care about the fundamentals. And again, I know that's frustrating, but don't hate the player, hate the game, because that is how the game is played. All right, so I've been trying to tell people, you know, we have in the, in the chat, chat, chart guys, chat room, we have 900 plus traders and it's been really boring in the broader market the last two weeks. The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, they're chopping sideways. The semiconductors are trading sideways. They've cooled way down. And I've just been saying to everybody, like, hey, this is where the opportunity is right now. As a trader, I'm seeking vol volatility and opportunity. It's not in the broader market. And even in Bitcoin, Bitcoin's tightening up a bit right now and crypto as well. It's consolidation in all those places. And now we're getting the focus and the breakout in the cannabis sector. So I've been saying, you know, massive volatility all last week, you know, just keep an eye, CGC. This is where my attention is. Watch the marijuana sector. This is where the opportunity is. Common EMA 12 support riders allow for adding to winners. I'm gonna talk about that concept because when the bulls run hard, that's what we get. Look at CGC on the one minute time frame this afternoon. I was just adding to winners by buying these little one minute EMA 12 support tests, sell a little bit, stick a break even stop and see how long that position can run. And you had other names that were just riding five minute, you know, ACB, five minute, not a good example, but there were other names that were just riding five minute EMA 12 support. Look at TLRY into the afternoon, held it, held it, held it, held it. So I look to add on EMA support. I sell partial quickly. And then I set a, set a break even stop, but there's another trade strategy, which is called the, I call it the later morning trade strategy. And so after we see the morning bulls shape up, 1055, reminder, the names that are running straight up, we will be looking for a later morning trade strategy, 15 minute higher lows for entries from here, ACB, MNMD, et cetera. So ACB straight up, I don't wanna chase. You look for the 15 minute higher low, you use the two minute trend as your guide and you look for the EMA 12 support to hold to tell you it's healthy consolidation. From that point, we saw another massive move up into the afternoon. Again, there's a whole video on this concept. If you uh, Google chart guys or go on our website, chart guys, later morning trade strategy, there's a whole video describing exactly what this opportunity was this morning. So that's how I chase, but have a clearly defined risk and reward when I am adding into this kind of strength. So CGC, huge move up, daily bull flag confirmed. Again, we were talking about what's gonna make it different than last time. 
When we topped out, that was it. This is different right now. Does it mean we're going to see more gains? That remains to be seen, but I can say it's different because we topped out higher, low, higher, high. Topped out higher, low, higher, high. We're establishing supports on the way up. The bulls are buying the dip. The, the balance between supply and demand is staying skewed to demand and the run is continuing. So the next major resistance level that we're looking at is just psychological 11 and then we're looking at 12 and then 1260 as the next few levels. But again, what we're looking at from here is do bulls buy five minute oversold conditions to lead to hourly higher lows? We did not see any hourly consolidation in many of these names. CGC did set an hourly higher low at 846. But again, tomorrow at some point, whether it's a gap up or not, we're looking for an hourly higher low and aggressive bulls will be looking for that level to use as an entry and to use that as a stop loss. So pretty much everything that was higher listed is getting this benefit. And again, it's a dollar volume. CGC today traded $400 million plus and MSOS traded almost $100 million, not bad, but uh, a quarter as much. You know, Trulieve traded seven and a half, $8 million. So $8 million, $400 million. Again, it's just a, that's, we're going to go to the volume and the volatility, wherever that is. So ACB, monster move. Again, the weakest of the week leading up into this move. Monster volume day. Next resistance level, I'm looking up at 816 as a key level from here. Again, you don't want to, in my opinion, you don't want to be holding the bag when the music stops, but the music has not stopped at this point. And what's going to tell us the music has stopped? Massive bear volume. Hourly back burners not marking daily higher lows. You can see the last daily consolidation. Look at CGC. We got right down to hourly oversold. The hourly RSI hit 31. A lot of us traders were playing that bounce that day. And uh, again, that, that marks the daily higher low into continuation. That's the ideal scenario for confidence in trend continuation. So that's something to keep an eye on as well as we watch for clues that we're getting follow through or not. Because again, I'm just going to constantly be looking for, is the music stopping? And right now there is no sign of it. You've also got, you know, potential S3, schedule three announcements. You've got safer. You've got Biden talking about April being second chance month. So there's still a lot of excitement uh, about the potential headlines that could drop. You know, a lot of people are saying, why, why are the Canadian names running? Is it the Canadian tax shift that's taking place? Is it, you know, people confused that these are the names they're going to benefit from the U.S. shifting? In my opinion, it's a little bit of everything. It's traders like me going to the volume and volatility. It's, it's everything that I just mentioned. And again, I just want the opportunity. I don't care where it comes from. TLRY, breakout as well. And there was rotation going on today. So the first name to run today was, I believe it was, I'm looking at Jungle Funk Joey letting us know. So it was uh, ACB first. ACB had a monster move up first. And then it consolidated. And then it was TLRY had its leg up. You know, it, it moved with it, but its, its real leg up was here midday. And then CGC's real leg up was the end of the day. It was really, you could split it up into thirds. ACB the first third. TLRY the middle when CGC was doing nothing and then CGC the end of the day. That rotation is extremely healthy as well. It's people like myself. You know, I, I was following along with that. I traded ACB midday. I traded CGC the majority uh, first thing in the morning and then the majority in the end of the day. And so that rotation is just, you know, take some profits here, put it over here and just money keeps flowing within the, you know, the ecosystem of this sector. So that's a good thing as well. Again, everything's the same in the sense that everything's looking for an hourly high or low. Everything's going to be watching for first five minute oversold conditions to try and mark that hourly high or low. And everything is in breakout mode as far as, you know, putting pressure on shorts and definitely a squeeze taking place right now. And so even just looking at these names, you know, we haven't been closing at the high of the day. This is the first close of the high of the day on TLRY that we've seen in a while. CGC has had some closes up there, but uh, SNDL, monster move, daily bull flag confirmed. Next resistance here after we cleared 236 and 248, I'm looking up at 269 is the next level. When, when you get running this hot, the previous levels are worth looking at, but what I care more about is the here and the now price trends, more than you know a resistance level from six months ago. 
I carry, is the trend healthy? I mean, look at SNDL on the five minute EMA 12. Again, as I talked about the EMA 12 riders, held it, held it, held it, held it, held it the entire day, aside from the last little bit there. It just, and you can make a simple statement. I won't sell. I will take some profit when we lose five minute EMA 12 or hourly EMA 12 or daily EMA 12, depending on what time frame is most important to you. And if we don't lose it, you keep riding that position. And so SNDL, huge day. GRWD, GRWG, daily bull flag, big day. Next resistance, next major level is 378. Again, you look at the hourly, didn't get to oversold during that daily consolidation, but we've got, you have to determine, do you care more about the hourly uptrend or the daily uptrend? Do you want to give it a longer leash to try for a bigger move? to try and hold until we do get a headline and some news? Or do you wanna be protective and lock in your gains and not sit through 20% of daily consolidation? Keep in mind, if this run keeps going before a headline, it will diminish the impact of a headline. This is you know pricing it in to a certain degree. The harder we run, the less we're gonna run after a headline, in my opinion. HITI, very low cap name, but benefiting, same thing, daily bull flag, Clearing to the highest level in a long time. 287 is the next resistance. So all the higher listed names just really benefiting from massive volume and massive follow through. I've still got an OGI swing after that. You know, I've got a partial swing remaining. My stop is now under two psychological, but uh, clearly focusing on other names. You know, I'll just leave that position open unless I stop out. But uh, the short-term trading opportunity is elsewhere as uh, the dilution news for AGI clearly deflated the relative strength bump that we have ha had had in this name for many months. So my short-term trading focus remains on these names. I will be selling into a gap up open. If I leave money on the table, I don't care. That's the mistake that I'll make. I'm not gonna give profit back. I will look to play oversold bounces and back burners to look for higher lows, whether it's on the hourly or the daily later on down the line. That's my strategy for trading this sector. While I've been talking, we've given up some of that after hours bump, but uh, really what I care about is pre-market. I don't care about after hours nearly as much. Pre-market is where we're gonna gauge where we're setting up, but looking forward to tomorrow. Actually might have to cancel. I am gonna have to cancel. I usually do a call on Thursdays at, at 9.30 a.m., but it's not worth the thousands of dollars that'll be flying around. All right, US side. So, you know, if you look at the U.S. charts on their own, there's no red flags. It's just nothing compared to the other side of the border. And it really, is, it's less about the other side of the border and more about the other exchanges. And so MSOS is a potential daily bull flag. This is a potential cup and handle. You know, we reject from 1064, we bull flag, and here we are testing 1064 into tomorrow. The volume's not there, just in terms of, you know, no massive volume. It's solid, again, $100 million dollars. I'm not complaining. I remember when I was hoping for $5 million in MSOS, but it's just not the same. If we break 1064, we're looking up to 11. Bulls just keep holding daily EMA 12 to keep that control. And uh, I exited some TCNNF on Monday to take some risk off into the, the Florida headline. And then I added it back today, recognizing, okay, these names are all running wild. They all confirm their daily bull flags. MSOS and TCNNF are potential daily bull flags. So added back what I sold again, same as last time, you know, not a huge difference. I did end, end up getting back in a slight amount cheaper than what I sold at, but it's not moving the needle. I'm just being protective and then, okay, coast is clear, jumping back in. So truly, if we're looking up at 1320, it is still trying to remain a lead bull. TCNNF divided by MSOS is a potential weekly bull flag. We'll see if that follows through or not. But again, keeping focus on the Florida names, AYRWF has been seeing a really nice move up over the last week, recovering from the warrant sell-off that it had. But daily stair-step pattern, higher low every single day. Again, these are for swing trading, in my opinion. And you know, that's just my mindset is swing trading. The, the US names, where I you know, don't really do much on a day-to-day -day basis with them. And then the Canadian names, I'm doing stuff on a minute-by-minute -minute basis because of the amount of volume and volatility. Psychedelic names, big time shout out. MNMD, just looking beautiful. And again, this is where, when there's so much going on, having a community of people you know, on the same team, shout out to, to Lance, newer Chart Guys members. We've been interacting on Twitter a long time, but you know, I posted about MNMD 
early in the morning. And so Lance had a really good trade uh, based off of my heads up. Hey, two day higher lows being set. You know, we're still looking real good on this name. And then later in the morning, he says, anybody like CYBN here? And I pull up the CYBN chart and say, oh yeah, that's a laggard. At that point in time, you know, we were trading down at 42 pennies and we end up going 10% higher into the end of the day because it was the same little higher low and just, it just got in as a laggard. MNMD showed us enough volume and enough follow through that and ATAI as well. I mean, this, this, everything was breaking out in terms of these high risk, high reward, psychedelic and, and cannabis medicine sectors. But uh, MNMD, I've still got a runner from many months ago, traded it, you know, playing just these little pullbacks. Got a real good fill here at 1117. So got some swing. I've got a, I've got a little bit of swing in, in a lot of things here. So uh, I don't even know. I have to open up my portfolio after this video and see exactly what I have and establish my game plan for tomorrow. But MNMD hitting multiple year highs and just again, just a beautiful higher low, higher high pattern. Just keep it going. Tons of space for an hourly higher low next consolidation. My game plan was CYBN. You know, I've got a swing trade position now, stop loss under 40 cents, but I'm going to take some partial profit into this move up to get my, you know, to get risk free on the position. I'd love to see the bulls break 52, but that's still a bit of a ways away. Have to see volume continue to increase for everything. Volume is key. If volume keeps showing up massively, the run can keep going. Eventually, we'll be looking for a volume climax to mark temporary tops. Bulls are just hoping that's not quite yet. So CYBN trying to act as a laggard, back testing and holding. Remember when CMPS did this, rejecting from weekly EMA 12 and then back testing and holding it? CMPS didn't really reject from it, but it was the back test and holds that led to the next leg up. CMPS is, is lagging behind. It's a lot larger of a market cap. It sold off real hard. I'm not paying attention to it because of how weak it is, but ATAI hitting fresh, you know, many 52 week highs, anything that's hitting 52 week highs has extra attention from me. But uh, ATAI next resistance level after 248, there's a gap to fill at 256. Now we're looking at 276. So again, this sector is looking real good as well. Just I'm just watching MNMD as a leader. How long can MNMD stay strong? If we fail to break the high of today, tomorrow on MNMD, I'm going to be taking a good bit of profit in the psychedelic sector, knowing that hourly consolidation will be coming. If we gap up in cannabis, I'm going to be taking some profit, knowing hourly consolidation will be coming. So that is my game plan. And again, it's, you know, you shouldn't be expecting to trade like I'm trading unless you have a decade plus experience, 10,000 plus hours. You know, all you can look to do is, is improve your game and, and learn things as these, you know, moves are taking place. But I just don't want anybody, you know, in their second year of trading to be looking at this and saying, why can't I do the same thing? It's just like watching, you know, college athletes and saying, why can't I do that? Well, it's pretty obvious why you can't do that. It takes a lot of time and effort. So that's what we're here for, to try and help, to try and give some guidance. But uh, it's all about the trends, higher lows and higher highs, establish a new support level, walk a stop loss up. As long as we keep the hourly uptrend, bulls are in complete control. That's my game plan from here. Congrats again to the bulls. And let's see how long this move can keep going. Don't forget to do good things.